Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and together let us bless his holy name. Hi, I'm Bishop Hewlin A. Hanna, and I am so delighted to be in your company one more time as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for you. I thank God for God. I thank him for his faithfulness and the way he has remained with us throughout the changing scenes of our lives. God is good. And I want to encourage us to get in the habit more and more of telling persons about the goodness of God, what God means to you, what he means to your family, what he means to your life, your very existence. Some people are not aware experientially that this God is so awesome, he's so wonderful, he's so magnificent. And so many times people are suffering and they have almost resigned themselves to living in a life of misery or living a life of misery. But when they can understand and appreciate that there is a better way, there's another way, it is the way of God, then perhaps they would turn homeward and allow God to impact their lives in a positive way. I want to speak on this topic today in this sermon, and um, it is somewhat provocative. It is me and my big mouth. Me and my big mouth. Have you ever been in a situation where you spoke out of turn? Have you ever been in the company of others? And as they conversed, you felt as if they should not be saying the things that they were uttering? Back in the day, a song was made popular by telling people they talked too much. This week's sermon is not so much about talking too much, but more so it is about speaking the wrong thing over yourself and those around you. You see, words do have meanings. Words do have meanings. Words do conjure up feelings, and the feelings can give rise to irrational behavior. As God's children, we are encouraged to speak those things which redound to living above our fears and not cowering to the whim and fancies of our own folly. When we speak, it is easy to assume that we take ownership of the words that we say. I want to say that again. Whatever comes from you by way of utterances, When you say it, correspondingly, you have to take ownership of what you say. Therefore, much thought and consideration should be attached to what we say and what we infer. A politician said, say what you mean and mean what you say. When we speak negatively over our lives, the enemy comes in and he uses our words against us. Be careful what you say, because what you say invariably is what you will get. And what you will get may not necessarily be what you want or even what you need. Be careful with what you say. In the New Testament book of John chapter 11, the story is told of Lazarus, a good friend of Jesus who was sick. Lazarus' sisters sought for Jesus to come and be there for them in this, their time of crisis. However, Jesus tarried, and while doing so, Lazarus passed. Jesus described Lazarus' state to the disciples as being asleep, and that he must go and awake him from his sleep. Well, the disciples, not fully understanding Jesus' reference, needed clarification, and Jesus informed them that Lazarus was dead. He referred to it as being asleep. They understood it in the terms of a person sleeping, and perhaps he was fatigued and needed some rest. Jesus made it quite clearly, or quite clear, Lazarus was dead. Arriving at the location of the two sisters, Jesus was greeted with these words by Martha, and I quote, Lord, If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, 
Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. The raw human emotions displayed here by Martha at the death of her brother was palpable. Death is never easy for the human being to wrap his head around. Whenever death comes, especially if it was a person who we were particularly fond of, when they pass, it does something to us. We get this feeling of emptiness and void and we feel as if we cannot do or anything to change the circumstances. But in the case of Martha, for some reason, she felt that Jesus' presence would have made a difference in their present circumstances. This, my brother, my sister, is remarkable. I take this as a positive, and I encourage you to do likewise. You see, some people blame God for the bad things that happen in their lives, and they kind of make God out to be a killjoy. They make God out to be so difficult and so removed from our day-to-day reality. But I see this implicit in Martha's assertion to Jesus that if you were here, even though our brother may have died, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking a little liberty here now, even though our brother may have died, you could have made some kind of difference. God's presence in our times of crisis will always make a difference. Do not diminish the presence of God in your situation, in your circumstances. Many times, God may be present in your circumstances and may choose not to say a single thing. But you just have this feeling, you have this knowingness that God's presence is there with you. I believe I'm speaking to someone right now. You don't have the answers. It is not clear what God is saying to you. You cannot even make an inference that God is speaking to you. But you know that God is present. And because you know that God is present, you also know and you can conclude that because God is present, God has my situation under control. I want to say to you, please, do not allow your situations or your circumstances to dictate to you whether or not God is present. Know that you are the child of God and speak with child with, with a child of God's affirmation that because I know who I am in Christ Jesus, God is there with me. Anticipate that he will be there. It makes all the difference in any situation and every circumstance that may confront us. In our humanness, we almost always gravitate to the negative. We say things about our situations that are based purely on what we perceive as bad or a bad thing for us. We take ownership of our sicknesses. We say, my high blood pressure, my diabetes, my this, my that, all of the other things, all of these things we take ownership of. And I understand the lingo. I understand when you say it in a lot of instances, you don't mean that I really own this. But sometimes we come to accept what we are faced with to the point where we stop fighting, we stop anticipating, we stop having hope, the enthusiasm is gone. I am saying to you as a child of God, as long as, as, as breath is flowing through you, as long as the human blood is running through your veins, you have an opportunity to see the dynamics of your situation changed in a positive way. Do not take what the enemy or what your circumstances are saying. If it's negative, do not take it as the final take on your situation. God has the final say. And so I encourage us as we continue. We take ownership of things that we ought to take to God and allow him to deal with on our behalf. We act from what I refer to as the weak side of faith. It's like we make an allowance for God. We say, well, if God doesn't 
do this, then maybe he wants me to bear this cross. If God doesn't do that, maybe he wants me to bear this burden. I want to stand and speak with the authority and with the assurance that if God has taken me to it, God will take me through it. And if God is going to take me through it, I have an expectation that when I resurface, when I come on the other side of my crises, I am coming out in victory. Someone needs to internalize this. Someone needs to take ownership of this and recognize that God does not take us on a witch hunt. When God strikes out with us, and that is when, we move, when we're moving in the direction where God will have us to move, we can know that we are going to touch every base and we are going to come home safely. I thank God for the assurance of his word. Move from the weak side of faith and use the, the word of God as your affirmation. If God says it, I'm going to stand on it. If God says it, I'm going to take ownership of it. It is mine by the grace of God. I say to us, we are too willing to say things that amount to making God small and making our problems appear bigger than his ability to deal with. I do not care what you're going through, beloved. God is bigger. Would you say that to yourself? In fact, internalize it, personalize, person, person, personalize it, and say, my God is bigger. My God is bigger. My God is stronger. My God is able to deal with everything that seemed to be insurmountable. My God is an awesome God. Here's what the Apostle Paul says as an encouragement to you and me. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, listen to this word. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Listen to this strong affirmation. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Where does this man, where does this writer get the authority, I dare say the audacity, to speak these words? He says, I know both how to be abased. I can be crushed by life. And I know also how to abound. Today may be a bad day for you, my brother, my sister. I don't know which part of the world or your community you may be in as you're receiving this word. But today may be a day where you feel crushed, emotionally adrift. But Paul says to the saints at Philippians or Philippi, I know how to be down there, but I also know how to be on the top. You won't always be down. You won't always be suffering at the hand of your enemy. God will catapult you to a place of positivity and a place of victory. And he says everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed, instructed by what and by who? He's instructed by the word of God and by the spirit of God and by life's experiences itself. Trouble will not always last. The darkness will give away to the brightness of a new day. The gloom and the depression that seem to hang over your head incessantly right now, God is going to break it and you're going to see a new vista of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak positively over yourself. Speak positively over your situation. Don't allow the naysayers to create the narrative but you speak with confidence in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share and encourage someone right now. Share this with your friend. Share this with someone who is going through a rough patch and let them know. What you say, if it's negative, chances are it will produce negativity. But what you say also, if it's positive, it will produce positivity. And so Paul goes back and he says, everywhere in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Many things the enemy hurl at us. He does so 
just to see us crumble. He does so to test, as it were, our mettle. But God is on our side. God is going to fight our battle. I want you to notice the confidence that Paul is displaying here. It had nothing to do with him on his own. Instead, he found his ability to do all things through Christ. This is not philosophy. This is not motivational. This is not some high-end philosophical mumbo-jumbo that he is running on with. He was saying, my strength, my ability, my capacity, my wherewithal is in Christ Jesus. Aren't you tired of trying to go it on your own? Aren't you tired of some of the people who are so free with advice and free with, with these little pep talks? Aren't you tired just having a little minuscule success, little minuscule victory? Don't you want to experience victory in a broader sense? In the name of Jesus, you and I, we have the victory. And a songwriter says, tell me who can stand against us when we call. You see what we say, what we say, what we proclaim, what we project when we call on that name. Jesus, Jesus, I have, you have, we have the victory. There's a difference. There is a decided difference when we bring God into the details. Oh yeah, there's a difference. He changes our speech. He causes us to say positive things. I know you're sick. I know the doctor's progno prognostication is not favorable to you. But I also know God. I also know God who defies human reality, and superimposes himself upon our reality. What he does is he removes the negativity and he replaces it with abounding confidence in him. It's not important necessarily what people feel about what you believe in God, but it is critically important that you stand strong in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you, stop speaking negativity over your family. Stop speaking negativity over your son. Yes, he's had some, some scratches and, and scrimmages with the law. Yes, he's not been the best child. Yes, your daughter has disappointed you. But can I encourage you to speak positively? And more than speaking to your children, speak to God. God, this is hard. This child has broken my heart into a million pieces. But I'm speaking to you, God. Give me the strength to speak life, to speak positivity, so that me and my big mouth are not the cause of greater, greater harm in my sphere of influence. And so let's go back to Martha. In the case of Martha, she had the confidence to make allowances for Jesus on the basis of his relationship with the Father. I know that you, Jesus, you have this relationship with your Father. And I know also implicitly that all good gifts come from your Father. What a tremendous confidence Martha is displaying here between Jesus on the one hand and God his Father on the other. She was saying that as you bear our situation, Scripture has already told us that Jesus wept when he saw that his friend had passed. He wept. He was broken. And he feels our infirmities. He identifies with what we go through. God is not just a happy, good time God. And all he wants is us on the mountaintop. But when we are in the valley, when we are in the doldrums of life, God is down there with us. He is in the details with us. Oh, my friend, don't give up on God. He has not given up on you. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say. Watch what you allow others to say and cause you to take it in. Sometimes when you hear 
the doubt, and when you hear the negativity coming from others, you need to just slip away and go somewhere else. You can't leave because you're working, but you need to perhaps ask the Holy Spirit to filter out the negativity of what is being spewed in your environment, what is being spewed in the in the atmosphere, and watch God as he comes through for you. Here's what she says in verse 22 of this chapter. But I know that even now, she's saying two things here now, based on my relationship with you, based on my past affiliation with you, based on the intimacy of the friendship that we've had with you over the years, I know that even now, see, she's bringing the past into the present tense. Every now and then, my brother, my sister, a testimony is necessary. God, you've been so good to me. And because you've been so good to me in the past, Lord, I know you're going to be good to me now. You see, when this happens, you can also project into the future. She says, but I know, past tense, that even now, present tense, and whatever thou wilt ask, future tense, God will give it thee. So you see the relationship coming out there? What a wonderful thing to consider. What a wonderful thing to contemplate. I know even now God will give it thee. Can I suggest to you, can I recommend to you that this is the posture that you should be adopting going forward and that is every now and then just look at where God has brought you from. Every now and then, when your current situation seems dismal and bleak, every now and then, pause long enough to see where God has brought you from. Someone says he's brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. And when you see where he's brought you from, have the confidence to know that if God could have brought you from where he did to where you are, there is a reason. There's a reason, and he will give to you a promising and a bright future. For you and me, this should be very instructive. Martha was here displaying her confidence in Jesus to connect with God. You see, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Listen to it again. She was displaying her confidence in Jesus to connect with God while at the same time affirming her own belief in God's willingness to respond to his son, Jesus Christ. So, so, so let's unpack this a little bit here now. She was saying to Jesus, I have the confidence in the relationship you have with your father, but also I know your father so well that I have the confidence that he will respond to you and that whatever you ask of your father, you being his son, he will do it. And what he does for you invariably will impact me. You see, God wants to be connected to us. God does not want us to be isolated from him. God does not want us to be alienated from him. Stay with him and he will stay with you. I feel this message today. I understand and appreciate this message. I've been in circumstances where I spoke too soon. I spoke prematurely. And instead of celebrating, I had to repent. Instead of saying, God, I thank you, I had to say, God, forgive me. Because I looked at my circumstances and they appeared so daunting. They appeared so intimidating that for a nanosecond, I was persuaded to believe that this is so gargantuan, it will destroy. But God came in and God changed the trajectory of things. And this says to me and to you, it says even though human beings, as human beings with feet of clay, be too must be very careful what we say with respect to our challenges. Be careful. Some things, we're going to pray in a few minutes. Some things take on a life of their own. Some things generate greater momentum based on what we say. 
And that can be good, and that can be bad. So let's look at it in a positive way. When we speak words of faith, when we speak words of affirmation, the atmosphere changes. Even your feeling change. It changes in such a way that you understand now, I can anticipate that God is going to do something. Watch your mouth, my brother, my sister. Watch what comes from your mouth in respect of what you believe and what you want God to do. I say we must believe that God wants to help us. We must know that God wants to help us. Or we must also believe that as his children, he knows exactly what we are going through. And rather than our first reaction being that of speaking defeat over ourselves, we must change our reaction. We must speak with confidence, and the confidence must be that God is with us. The disciples said that if Lazarus was asleep, then it was a good thing. But Jesus' language was different from theirs. Death to him was nothing more than a sleep. He had to demonstrate then to the disciples, Mary and Martha, that death did not have the final say in Lazarus' situation. I say to us, there are some things in our lives that we are going to have to speak to differently. We're going to have to take the authority. We're going to have to speak the words of faith over some of the issues that we face. We cannot speak the words of acceptance when God is not finished with us. You see? Do not declare death where God is declaring resurrection. Do not declare the end where God is declaring the beginning. Do not declare, I am down, if God is declaring you are up. Speak what God is speaking. See what God is seeing. We cannot and should not speak the words of resignation when God is telling us to fight on. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. We cannot speak words of discouragement to others when God is telling us that the final channel or chapter has not yet been written. Stop doing harm to yourself, my brother, my sister. Stop in the name of Jesus. Stop by speaking and repeating things that God will have you to speak. Stop speaking incorrectly. Stop. You know, you know, you know how tragic it will be to go to a doctor and for a doctor to tell you one thing, and because you don't understand the nuances of the medical language, you take everything the doctor says and you leave, and you come home worried, and you set off a chain of anxiety in your family. Stop speaking things and stop repeating things that others are incorrectly saying about you. God says, we're getting ready to pray. God says that the battle is his. Stop telling yourself that you're not going to make it. He says the battle is his. Stop declaring over your life and that of your family that you will always be like this. I come against that in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not breathe defeat over yourself. Learn to see in yourself what God sees in you. Learn to see what's in your situation what God sees in your situation. What I love about God is God always, he's always showing us hope. He's always showing us a brighter future. He's always telling us, go on, go on. I miss you. And so I say, as I conclude, whoever told you that God cannot help and whoever told you that God is not there for you, that person is either ignorant about the knowledge of God or they're just simply lying to you. In the case of Lazarus, Jesus asked this profound question. He asked this of Mary and Martha, where have you laid him? Jesus was beyond their doubts. He was beyond their human assumptions. Jesus now was in the business now 
of making this resurrection possible. He already said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. He's already said this to them. So he's moving speedily. Where have they laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Here now are the words of life, power, and authority. John 11, 41c to 44. These are Jesus' words. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Listen to the affirmation. Listen to speaking properly and positively. And I knew that thou hearest me going into the past always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. The people which stand now. Help me, Lord, that I will speak into their situation. And they will understand that something is about to happen. He says that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. I feel like being dramatic here, but I'm not going to. Lazarus, come forth. This is Jesus speaking. Listen to the authority. And he that was dead as in the cessation of life, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Listen to Jesus. And his face was bound with a napkin. Watch Jesus taking the authority. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. My friend, as we go to pray, this is not the time to be manipulated by your emotions. This is not the time to be intimidated by your circumstances. This is not the time to entertain bad news. This is the time to fight back. This is the time to speak the language of faith with the authority of the word of God. When we were little children and one of our friends said something to us that upset us, we would say, boy, watch your mouth. This served then as a caution that our friend needed to be careful of what he said. And so I say this. I say to you, not as an act of bullying or arrogance. Rather, I say this to you as a dear friend and brother. Watch your mouth. Control what comes out of your heart through the words of your lips. Because they can very well impact what you say and impact what you are and what you will become. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we thank you today for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you today, Lord, that we will leave this sermon today speaking positively in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you because we will connect our hearts in such a way that we will humbly fall before you and ask you, Lord, to come in and to fix everything that may be out of sync with your will for our lives. And then, Lord, I pray for the one who does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, who may be meandering through life. I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring that person into a personal relationship with you. Your word tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray today that a man, woman, boy, girl, a community would acknowledge the need for you and would have their lives changed immediately. Thank you again for your word today. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved God, bless you. May God keep you. And let us go in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, I'm Bishop Hewlin A. Hannah. Thank you for being with us on The Word with Bishop Hannah. Until the next time, God bless you. Amen.